34 years ago, I walked into a housing development in the Lower East Side of Manhattan and met a 10-year-old boy. His name was David. It was 1987. I was working on Wall Street, and I had volunteered for the Big Brothers Association. David lived in what I'd come to realize was the most heavily photographed crime scene in New York City. It was the height of the crack in AIDS epidemics, literally destroying and disrupting communities all over this country. And I remember uh, glass crack vials cracking under my shoes as I walked into his building. And to be honest, I was a little bit scared. For the next two years, I spent every single Saturday religiously with David. And what he taught me over those two years fundamentally changed my entire life. You see, David had all the motivation, the ambition, the ability to be successful. But it was so clear that his potential, his opportunity was being limited by his zip code, right? by the bank balance of his mom, by the school system he attended, and indeed by the color of his skin. Now, I remember his mom asked me to go to parents' night in his elementary school because she didn't speak English that well. So I was all excited. I had a suit on. I walked in. I said, hi, I'm Gerald. I'm here to hear about David. Can you tell me, how's David doing in class? And I'll never forget, the teacher looked up. He scratched his head. He said, David, 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 which kid is he? And I thought, if that doesn't define educational inequality in this country, Nothing does. And so it struck me at that time that we are wasting so much human capital in a country where we have no one to waste. And it was because of those experiences with David that I ultimately started a nonprofit organization called Year Up. Year Up works with low income 18 to 26 year olds, and in one year or less, we empower those young people to go from either no income or low income to livable wages in the country's best possible companies. We've been blessed over the last 21 years now to serve 35,000 young adults. And I'm proud to say that we place more low-income young adults of color into the Fortune 500 than pretty much any other single institution in the United States. OK, so why am I telling you this? It's not to sell Europe. It's not to raise donations. Although the reality is, as a CEO of a nonprofit, I spend pretty much every single waking hour doing those two things. <laughs> I'm telling you this because it was incredibly humbling to have started a program, in a successful program, and then to realize that programs rarely, if ever, change the country. And that true change has to be systemic. And to change systems, we have to start by changing our beliefs in our behaviors. And so what we saw over the past 21 years is we've learned a few things that we think can be incredibly valuable for anyone in this country who actually wants to create positive change. Now, let's start with beliefs. If we can believe for a moment that the good Lord didn't distribute intelligence by zip code and bank balance, then we can believe that talent is distributed evenly across this country even if opportunity is not. Right? That's the first way we can make a difference, to challenge our own beliefs as to who's talented in the country and where does talent reside in the country. If we can believe that talent is distributed evenly, then we can ask the question, how can we get access to all of that talent in order to build the very best companies and indeed to be successful in a company going forward, an increasingly diverse society, we must be able to retain, to attract, to develop the very best talent out there and to reduce the barriers that prevent so much talent from finding their way to us. And there's so much we can do to change our behavior if we actually believe the talent is truly distributed evenly. And so today I'm going to give you one action, an important action you can take literally today that can make a real difference. Go to your organization's website. Click on that link that talks about open jobs and read through the job descriptions. And if your company requires a four-year degree in order to apply for a job, call up HR 
and say, help me to understand what evidence do you have that this rather blunt sorting mechanism results in higher quality hires. And I'd suggest you might be waiting a few seconds because there's not many people who can give you a good answer to that question. Because we have literally used four-year degree requirements reflexively. Why? It's an easy way to sort people. It has some incredibly negative consequences. When we require a four-year degree to apply for a job, you exclude 84% of Latinos and 78% of African Americans in the United States today. And we still live in a country right now where I can predict whether you are going to go to college more by your bank balance than your SAT score. The traditional view of what it means to go to college is wholly inconsistent with the lived experience of the vast majority of our citizens. In fact, I bet you, like I, would be as kind of surprised to learn that only nine out of 100 adults in the country have a four-year degree that they got between the ages of 18 and 22. 91 out of 100 adults don't. What we have led ourselves to believe is the traditional path to college is only experienced by nine out of 100 adults in this country. And we've conditioned a whole generation to somehow believe that if you didn't go down that path the same way you are less than, you are not valuable. There's tremendously negative consequences when that happens. Now, I'm not anti-college at all. I think everyone needs post-secondary education, but we've got to broaden our view. What does that mean? What are the multiple pathways people can take to get into the mainstream of this country? We did a two-year study with Harvard Business School and Accenture, and we proved when you require a four-year degree, especially a middle skill role, uh, you cry that four-year degree that it is not needed, you pay 11 to 30% more in salary, it takes longer to hire the person, you get less diversity, and they turn over more quickly, right? So this is truly a way you today can make a difference. Right? Your company is often trying to find the great talent. You can help. Your organizations are trying to build diversity. You can actually make a difference today just by picking up that telephone. This is David today. He is 44 years old. For all intents and purposes, he is a member of our family. He is a homeowner. He is a very successful artist, author, and public speaker. He and his wife, Sandra, have three beautiful children. You can see his son, Davisito, in this photo. And you can also see the book next to David that he just published with Scholastic that sold out its first edition called Little Heroes of Color. And David is trying to educate children about all the people of color in this country who haven't been recognized properly and help them to learn that at a relatively young age. Because you see, David is an educator at his absolute core and uses his art as a way to educate. He's certainly been my best teacher in my entire life. And I'll tell you that there are millions and millions of young adults like David out there in this country. And all they lack is the opportunity. We can combine some good programs like Big Brothers, like Year Up, and like many others, but also then be willing to change our beliefs and our behaviors in ways that ultimately allow us to make that founding principle in this country true, opportunity for all. Thank you so much.